I think it's fairly common to get ourselves into a situation where we're making queries against our database that just aren't the best queries to be doing. Maybe they work well with small data sets, but as things continue to grow in our applications, these queries that once worked really well start to really show the fact that they're not really optimal for what we're trying to do. And this is seen in a bunch of different ways. For example, our applications can just start to have long load times as the queries that we're making are not really optimized for what we're trying to return. And also, we might be accessing our database using patterns that just really aren't the best. Now, one tool that we've got at our disposal if we're using Prisma is something called Prisma Optimize. And Prisma Optimize allows us to listen for the queries coming into our database, see what's running slowly, be able to see what we're doing to access our database that really isn't a good pattern, and be able to make changes from any recommendations that are given. So today, let's take a look at how to set up Optimize in an application and be able to listen for any recommendations that we can get out of it to make changes to the way that we're doing our queries. The first thing we'll do here is initialize Prisma in a project. So I've got this shell of a project all ready to go. Let's initialize Prisma and we'll use Prisma Postgres as our database so that we can get running quickly. npx prisma init dash dash db. I stick with US East 1 for the region. The project name here can be Prisma Optimize. All right, so the database was created. We've got our Prisma directory. We've got a schema file there. And in the environment file, we have got a connection string to our new Prisma Postgres database. So we're all set there. Why don't we get a really simple model in place that will give us something to work with? So here's a little bit of modeling. We've got a user model. We've got a post model. They are related, so a user has many posts. And this should be enough for now. Let's save this, and then we can run migrations. npx prisma migrate dev, and the name will be init. All right, so the first migration is complete. We've got a migrations directory. Let's add a seed file to get some data, seed.ts. In there, I'm going to drop in a seed script. So we're creating some users and some posts associated with them. We'll save this and we will run the seed. npx prisma db seed. All right, data is in place. So we're ready to start working with some queries and to see how we can optimize them. So over here in server.ts, let's get ourselves set up with an initial query. So we can do import Prisma clients and new up our Prisma clients. So there we go. Let's now call for our users. Const users equals await Prisma user find many. Let's include the posts with those and we can log them out to the console. Then let's just check to see if it's working. npm run dev. All right, cool, so we've got our users, we've got the related posts, so everything is coming through as we'd expect. All right, so we're now ready to go and set up Optimize, and that's over in the Prisma console, so console.prisma.io. Our database is there. Let's go over to the Optimize tab, and then let's go to Launch It, Launch Optimize. If it's the first time using it, we'll be walked through the steps of getting an API key and then how to set it up. So why don't we start with the API key, Generate API Key. We can copy that. Back over in the project, we can put that in the .env file, just after database URL. We'll save that, close things up. Then reading through the next steps here, what we see is that we've got to install some packages. So we need this extension optimize package and also Prisma instrumentation as well. We've already got Prisma clients and we've got the Prisma CLI. So let's grab these two and we'll install them now. Over in the project, let's stop that process running the main script and we'll do npm install We'll get extension optimize and instrumentation. All right, let's take a look at what's next. After those are installed, we need to import and use the extension. So what that looks like is over here where we are using Prisma, where we're newing up our Prisma clients, we can import the with optimize function with optimize that comes from the extension optimize package. And then we can go and extend the Prisma client. Now optimize is going to require an API key be passed to it. So we can do that API key. And what we put into the environment file was called optimize API key. So we can use that over here. API key points to process.env.optimize API key. All right, cool. So we'll save this and then we'll generate the client npx prisma generate. And now we're in a state where we should be able to listen for queries going to our database. So over here as the last step, let's say finish and optimize. And when we do that, we get a recording that is started for us. So the way that Optimize works is that we start and stop a recording to be able to listen for queries at any given time that we might want to. So now that we're recording, let's try making some queries. To do that, we can just run the app again, npm run dev. There's our result. And back over in Optimize, we see that first query that was made. It's a user find many, we can click into it. And we get some information about timing in the query. So we've got a count of one, we're seeing the average duration, 
And as this query would run in our application for any given period of time, we'd be able to see the trends that are happening with the query. So for example, if we refresh again to make that query go, maybe we do it even a couple more times. So I'll just save this to restart the server. That query gets made again. Then back over here, we can refresh. Now we see the average duration just decreased. So that's one thing that we can do where we can see queries at the individual level, start to see timing on them, and maybe start to think about how we might change our queries based on how much time something is taking. We might want to reform the queries that we've got and then see what kind of latency is happening in those new queries and start to optimize things that way. The other thing that is offered in Optimize is this Recommendations tab. And what happens here is that when our recording is done, when we go and stop the recording, we are going to see a set of recommendations that are offered by Optimize for how we might go improve our queries. So if we were to stop this right now, we would see some recommendations. Let's do something in the application just to trigger a very specific recommendation though. And that is we're going to do a long running transaction. This will be kind of a contrived example, but it's going to show the effect that we want. So const get users long running, that's what I'm gonna do here. It's an async function. Instead of just going and finding many, we're going to use a transaction. So let's return prisma.dollarTransaction. And into this transaction, we'll pass a callback, an async callback, where we'll go and find the users, but instead of returning them right away, we'll pretend that we're going off and doing some kind of network activity or something that's going to increase the latency here. So for example, here we might just await a promise that has a set timeout so that we can simulate some latency. So for example, await a new promise with a resolve, set that not to 10 seconds, but maybe just two seconds. So with that in place, instead of saying that users calls directly into the user find menu, let's do await get users long running, then we'll console.log the users. All right, so let's save that. All right, so we get that latency simulated. We'll do maybe just another refresh so that we're making sure it's picked up. Now let's go and stop the optimized session so that we can see it on the screen here. So stop recording. So what the recommendations here show are a number of things, including the long running transaction that we just simulated. So, so avoid long running transactions. There's a whole write up here about what the issue is and why it's a concern, and then things we can do to mitigate it. So if you're using Prisma and you'd like to find ways to optimize the queries in your application, check out Prisma Optimize. It works very well with Prisma Postgres especially, but you can also bring other database providers as well. If you have any questions at all about Prisma Optimize, please feel free to drop them in the comments below, or you can reach out to us. We're at prisma.io on the web or at Prisma on Twitter. Thanks for watching.